On the Buses was to be a hit sitcom in the late 1960s and early 1970s, but for it to have ever hit our screens, they needed a fleet of buses for filming purposes. Producer Stuart Allen's first port of call was to a London transport garage near Wembley. Sadly, the massive transport company refused to be involved, feeding negative feedback for both the staff and their bus services. Allen was to then turn his attention to Eastern National, and to his relief, they were far more accommodating, offering the use of their Bristol Lodecker buses and exterior access to their wood green garage on Lodship Lane for filming. On the buses became a step closer to going into production. Often overlooked, or perhaps not fully understood by the fans, was that the buses were merely leased to London Weekend Television, also known as LWT, for filming. The buses were in public service at the time and could be seen on passenger services for most of the week and so LWT had to be very careful to look after all buses when used for filming. The buses had to be returned to Eastern National in immaculate condition. This is why professional drivers were always present to undertake any remotely challenging driving scenes. Of course, Wedge Varney held a PSV licence but he was not insured but Reg would get behind the steering wheel when appearing to start up the bus and the depot set or if a risk of damage was deemed nil. The agreement between Eastern National and LWT was vital for both companies. Eastern National needed every bus in their fleet operational at all times in order to fulfil their passenger services and they could not be involved in any incidents that could seriously jeopardise their standing in the transport industry leading to their licence being revoked, such as having their buses damaged or having an accident causing an injury whilst involved in filming duties. LWT needed Eastern Nationals cooperation as without it on the buses would not have been able to continue. This meant it was imperative that they stuck rigidly to the guidelines set out to them by Eastern National. In scenes, it may appear to fans there were no such guidelines as buses appeared to get damaged but this was all done by special effects or approval of Eastern National. In the series 3 episode, Radio Control stands bus is apparently seen with a crumpled roof having hit a low-level bridge. This stunt was created using a single-decker bus with a false upper deck with a tarpaulin rolled back to appear like crumpled metal, and the busy bridge would not have been damaged in any way. In the series 6 episode, No Snowmoke Without Fire, we see Stan's bus in flames. This was a Leyland PD2 RTL X London transport stock, uh, and the flames were caused by a discarded cigarette and a used ticket bin. The bus used for the stunt was destined for the scrap heap, so LWT had a free reign in this instance to do as they pleased. A similar agreement was in place for the spin-off films, with Hammer Films using Eastern National buses that had just been retired from service prior to filming. The buses were the older Bristol K-type models, which had passed into the ownership of a private owner. Of course, Hammer still had to treat the buses with great care, and the stunt where the buses are seen destroying a bus shelter and telephone box saw props used that were rigged to fall apart with the slightest touch. Also in the scene, in Mutiny on the Buses, where the minivan gets crossed by Stan's reversing bus, the minivan was a mere shell with its engine removed, while the, the bus had been fitted with reinforced metal panels to take the brunt of the impact, ensuring the bus remained undamaged. By the time the spin-off films went into production, London Transport had had a change of heart and wrote to the writers offering to supply their buses for filming. Their input was to see the use of their Skidpan pan facility and the bus for filming the iconic skid pan scene seen in the first spin-off film. Of course, no damage befell the bus and the scenes filming would have been carefully monitored by London Transport. The buses seen damaged in the opening scene of Holiday on the Buses were expendable stock, all destined to be scrapped and so Hammer Films could do as they pleased here, but had to still avoid any damage to buses still in service. In Holiday on the Buses, an open-top Bristol Lodecker under service of the Crossville Motor Services Company was hired for filming. Again, there were strict guidelines in place, with Crossville stipulating that their drivers only drove the bus out on the roads, and so any scenes where it appears Wedge was driving, the bus was actually being towed. The bus was not damaged and did not end up in the Irish Sea, despite how it may have looked. 
The bus was driven onto and off of the beach using boats and scenes with the bus appearing underwater were achieved by the use of a plywood bus and a map painting on a pane of glass created by the special effects team led by Les Bowie. This all ensured that the bus would be returned to Crosswell undamaged and was to return to public service for the next few years. And so you see that Eastern National and later London Transport and Crosswell all had strict guidelines which LWT and the Hammer Films had to adhere to. The great discipline shown by the production teams of on the buses, on the big screen and the small screen ensured that we saw seven serious and three spin-off films made.